Hello and welcome to this demo in which we are going to show you how easy it is to develop in Nuvolaris. Here we have Nuvolaris which is in execution right now. You can deploy it on any Kubernetes using just a single CLI command which is something you can do yourself by downloading the latest release from Nuvolaris GitHub repository. The only prerequisite is that you have a Kubernetes cluster running. Here you can see all things that are running under the hood. Uh, the best thing is that you as a developer don't need to know what is going on there. You will not interact with Nuvolaris using Cube Control CLI or kubectl, to which you may be used to if you are working with Kubernetes. Instead, in Nuvolaris you have a command line interface or CLI which allows you to create microservices or actions, as we call them. Since Nuvolaris is based on OpenWhisk, it embeds its commands, which you can see here as Whisk. So Nuvolaris also has packages, and inside packages we have actions or microservices. So let's begin right away with um, the command to list packages. So we will now execute whisk package list. And as you can see, we don't have any packages yet. So let's check actions. So again, we don't have any actions created yet. We'll now start the demo by creating a service or action that pings the database to find out whether it's up and running. Let's see uh, how the code of this microservice looks like. In this case, we are using JavaScript and we will use it both for backend and frontend. We could also use Java, Python, Go, Rust, practically any common programming language in use. However, it's very convenient to write applications in JavaScript because then we have full stack applications written in the same language. You don't have to manage uh, the backend complexity, so you can just simply write a sequence of simple actions to manage the backend, which is exactly uh, what we will be showing you. So, as you can see, the code of the function that pings the database is really simple. It takes the database, Redis in this case, creates the client and connects to the database. It's common code that you will see practically everywhere. Then, using the database, uh, it executes the ping function, which returns the so-called promise in JavaScript. When the ping is done, the promise returns the result of the ping. And this simple code is already a microservice that we can deploy. So the first thing we must do is to create a package. In the package, we are passing the database as a parameter. And by doing this, all actions of this package will see this parameter. At this point, we can up, uh, deploy the ping action. And now, after deploying, we are able to actually execute or to invoke the action. This action will now try to connect to the database and will report if database can be accessed. As you can see, the action was executed and returned the result, which is Pong. That means that the database is indeed up and running. Now we can go ahead and start implementing CRUD functionalities. CRUD in terms of microservices means a set of actions upon a resource that are create, read, update, and delete. Or if you prefer, get, set, update, and delete of a resource. We will start with implementing the get, which serves to extract a record out of the database. So let's see how the code of the get function looks like. Again, we see the same two lines, exactly the same as before, that serve to connect to the database. Then we define a key with a prefix, which is a common thing usually done to distinguish a key in Redis. 
then we execute dbget passing the key and again this is a promise if successful then we parse the returned result which is JSON encoded or we return the error. So this is really everything you need to do to implement a microservice which reads the record based on its key. Let's now look at the set which is slightly more complicated. Again we see the two lines to connect to the database. Then we define the key followed by the record value. Since it is JSON, we have to encode the values as such, which is what we do here. So this defines the structure of a database record. And when we invoke the set action or service, we pass it name, company, and phone. Then we execute DB set, passing it the key and the value. And then again, this is a promise, can return um, a value or an error. We will complete the example with del or delete action, which looks very similar. The only difference being that in this case we are executing db del, promise passing the key. And now we are ready to deploy these three actions. There are commands to deploy them all together, but here for simplicity we will deploy them one at a time. Here you see we are deploying get and we added minus minus web option because we want to expose this action as a URL uh, because we'll use it from the front end. Now we will deploy set and finally we will deploy del. Now we have an application with some microservices. If we now again execute whisk action list, this time we see that there are already four microservices, delete, set, get and ping. Keep in mind that each of these microservices corresponds to a running container, which is initialized and deployed on Kubernetes. So there is a series of actions going on in the background of which you don't have to care about because Novolaris does all of that for you. All you really have to do is just to supply the action and Novolaris will do all the rest. Now let's try to test some of these values, some of these actions. We will invoke the set, which should write the record, so it returns OK. Now we can try to read it with get. We should see the contents of the record with the values we specified earlier. And here we put Nimbella, instead it should be Novolaris, so let's fix that. Now let's try to remove the record. So we see that one record has been removed. And if we again call get, we should see the error because the record is no longer in the database. Now let's create and invoke another action called all, which is equivalent to selecting all the records from the database. Again, nothing much complicated here. The, sim the same first two lines. Then instead of a single key, we here take all the keys starting with the specified prefix address. Then if the array of keys is empty, we return empty result. Otherwise, we execute multiple get or uh, we execute the sequence of get calls. The promise returns a list of values, which we have to parse one by one. Again, this code looks uh, very familiar if uh, you're using JavaScript, nothing special here, or we return uh, an error from the promise. And now let's try to deploy and execute this function to see what happens. If we call it, then it will return an empty array because we don't have data in the database. If we set a single value and invoke the list again, it returns the list with just a single element. Then we can set another value and then execute the action again. And now it returns two values in the array. So it means we have two records in the database. And with this, we have finalized the back end of our application so we can continue with developing the front end. We will open another terminal and create a template in the framework we very much appreciate called Svelte. 
uh, Svelte allows very easy creation of front ends that are attached to back end we just created. We will create a standard template by using uh, digit command, which simply takes standard Svelte template. So we will then enter into the directory and install Svelte, which is the standard procedure for any front-end framework you use. So basically uh, you would do very same thing with the React or Angular. And now we have to exercise a little bit of patience here while the sources are downloading. So we're just waiting for the download to finish. And it is done. So now we will execute Svelte in developer mode. That basically means that any change will be compiled on the fly and live updated in the front end rendering. Um, and um, so Svelte is running and now it will ask us to open the browser, which we will do. And in the browser, we will see the default uh, Hello World Svelte template running on port 8080 in localhost. And now we go back to implementing the app step by step. First, we'll take a look at App 1 Svelte, which is the front end code in JavaScript. Here you can see that it points to a URL which in this case is local, but in general can be also your production environment. And then what this code does is basically uh, executes the call to all action, which you remember lists all records from the database in the line fetch base all. And then it loads the um, response into the result, extracts JSON, and loads it into um, a, a data array variable. Uh, when a page containing this code is loaded, on mount executes fetch and loads it into the data array variable. Now we can try to render. So the next step is to implement the template. What you see here is Velti code, but you may notice it looks very similar to what you could see in Angular or React. Here we iterate through the data array and display records as the rows in HTML table. And with these two pieces of code, we are already ready to visualize the database. So what we will do now is concatenate these two files into a single file, app.svelte. And it's already done. If now we go and inspect to see what is going on. we will find a call to all JSON, which actually calls the microservice we implemented and deployed earlier. The service returns an array with the two elements, which are the ones we inserted before, and renders them in the table. So we already implemented the first part of the CRUD, the select or read. Now let's try to implement create. For this, we will need the input form. This is the simple code of a form. The fields of the form are associated to values of the record to be inserted, like name, company, and phone. And then when the button add is clicked, 
the contents of the form will be submitted. And this in the second file is the code for the submit function. Here is the form object in which we will put the values of the record. And this is the submit function that is called when add button is pressed. When that happens, a post call will be triggered, passing the values taken from the form as JSON payload. Once the post call is fired and successful, we will update uh, by calling all function, which then um, like updates um, the rendering of the table. Therefore, with these two functions that we will concatenate now into a signal file, we can see um, that the code is live updated and we see the form, input form, showing up in the page. So now we add values to be inserted to the database and click the Add button. And you can see that it's immediately uh, refreshed, displayed in the table. In the background, we see that a set was executed, followed by all, which reloads the records from the database. To complete this CRUD, we need just the final step to implement deletion. This is the function that removes the record, so it calls the del action that we created previously, passing in the value that's selected with the radio button. And then uh, upon a successful return of the promise, it updates the database by, by calling the all um, action. The very last thing is to add a button remove, which executes remove when it's clicked. So we now concatenate the, these two pieces and the application is complete with the remove button added. App is live reloading and you, we can now try the delete functionality. We can select a record and remove it. And with this demo, we demonstrated how in a very short time you can implement a complete CRUD app application using microservices or action. Actions, which is running on Kubernetes, where the creation of containers, scalability, and all the complexity of deployment is hidden. There is no need for a developer to know or care about any of this. So, um, this is a practical demonstration of what is Novolaris. It is a complete platform for cloud native development, which is using Kubernetes under the hood but it is meant to simplify developers' experience. It is basically ready to use serverless platform for Kubernetes, a platform for developing complex applications in a simple manner, which saves you the effort of learning and managing Kubernetes itself.